From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that it is. Not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Brett Favre, who I always thought was dyslexic because really Favre would be F-A-R-V-E, wouldn't it? Or F-A-R-V? How is F-A-V-R-E, Favre? Never made any sense. Still doesn't. We just kind of accept this stuff. Oh, yeah, well, he's illiterate, but he's a football player, hey? Jesus. So anyway, uh, this 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 baby, this whiner, this guy who every year has this big emotional soap opera about whether or not he's going to retire. Will he? Won't he? All of Wisconsin, you know, hanging on his every word. Just a bunch of saps. Well, finally, after years of having everybody uh, on tenterhooks, whatever those are, Brett Favre announced his retirement. And uh, are are we surprised that after dragging all of Wisconsin through this uh, this soap opera every year, like a like a little whiner, like a little baby, are we the least bit surprised at the way Brett Favre sounded at his press conference? I promised I wouldn't get emotional. I'd like to thank the, the Packers for giving me an opportunity as well. I hope that every penny Come on, get to it. I hope that every penny that they've spent on me they know it was money well spent. I, uh, it was never about the money or fame or, or the records. And I hear people talk about uh, your accomplishments and things that It was never my accomplishments. It was our accomplishments. And the teammates that I played with, and I can name so many. You won't. It was never about me. It was about everybody else. I'm honored. Really. Get those adenoids fixed, will you? Um... Yeah, I am honored. I hope everyone knows that how special this is. I truly appreciate the opportunity. And as they say, all good things must come come to an end. Thank God this one came to an end. You kidding me, right? Come on, you made $83 bazillion. Don't tell me it was not about the fame or the money. You didn't play for free, pal. And the only reason you're crying now is because you can't push your body out there and earn another uh, bazillion dollars. 
Dean, you're exactly right. I would never cry. For my last broadcast, I would not cry. I would do the best goddamn broadcast I ever did, because believe me, the day I do my final broadcast, the day I don't have to worry that they're going to take away my job or that they might fire me or something like that, the day I don't have to worry about that, God only knows what I'm going to do on the air that day. I mean, that's a show not to be missed. But you won't hear me coming on going... <laughs> I couldn't have done it alone. I want to thank all the other people made it possible. Oh, you know, I, I want to thank the nasty man. I want to thank Ricky Rackman. I want to, I want to thank Jonathan Brammeyer. I want to thank, uh, I, want to, I want to thank John and Jeff. I want to thank Brian Whitman, you know, even though you were never here, you were wonderful. You were always wonderful. <laughs> you were always so good to me. I want... I want... <laughs> I want to thank Sam Rubin. Rob Barnett. Everybody else is made this possible. And, and most of all, Jack Silver. <clears throat> Can you imagine? Come on. Brett Favre, what are you doing? Besides being illiterate, and besides dragging everybody through this uh, big phony... Uh, Soap opera every year. Will you retire? Won't you retire? Now you're just a big blubbering baby. <laughs> Come on, folks. Are you with me on this? Tom Likes. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 So why don't you marry this? Uh, I already got a best friend. She listens, does what I say, doesn't talk back, doesn't use the restroom. She's a man's best friend. A dog. Oh, and well, she is a bitch. Yeah, she's a bitch. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Oh, yes, Brett Farm retired. And we heard his, uh, his blubbering. Let's read you uh, some of the email that's coming in about this. A guy who calls himself T-Bone, probably more like Wishbone, writes and says, Tom, you have pushed the limit further than ever before this time. You must not be a regular listener. <laughs> Brett Favre is one of the greatest athletes ever and a much better man than you are or will ever be. You called him a pussy? What do you do? Sit on your fat ass in the studio while he was playing one of the roughest sports ever. You are worthless compared to him. Sure, he was emotional during his retirement speech. 18 years in the NFL without ever missing a game. It's almost half his life. Your problem is you have no emotion. Did you laugh at your mother's funeral? Probably. What does that have to do with this? I think you should take a hard hit from Warren Sapp and see if your old brittle bones survive it. Why don't you shut up, you a-hole? Your money doesn't mean crap, and you will probably go to hell. Signed, T-Bone in Fountain Valley. Thank you so much, T-Bone. Then Doug writes in, he says, Hey, Tom, in regard to the Brett Favre thing, can you take me out sniveling wimp style? one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. This is Anthony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Anthony. Hey, Tommy boy. I love you. You, uh, that, that, that guy who wrote the email he's crazy man you have tons of words and i totally agree with you 
99% of the time, but this would happen 1% of the time where I can't agree. I know he was, you know, a crybaby and everything, but to be honest, dude, it's like he really wasn't about the money. Yes, he made a ton of oh, money. Oh, stop it. You know, that is such a – I let me tell you, I'm all about the money, and he's all about the money it, because he could easily have rege- – you know what? The Packers could have been a much better team if they didn't have to pay Brett Favre so much money. Think about it. If it was all about the love of the game, why didn't Brett Favre say, I'll take the NFL minimum as long as you promise to spend it on bringing great players to Green Bay so I can win championships? Did he do that? He didn't do that. Right. But, he, right. But right. He was never right. one of those guys either who, you know, hold a bell for money. You know, he, you never really heard about I don't that. care about that. What, he well, didn't have to take millions and millions of dollars. I don't know, Tom. He and here he is in his speech, tearfully saying, uh, I hope they feel the money with well spent. Like, well, guess what? If you were not all about the money, you should have said, keep the money, spend it on other great players so Green Bay can win 20 championships while I'm here. Or 18, if you played 18 years. And he didn't do that. But he, he, he was worth it, just like you're worth it. Well, you guess know? what? If I wanted, you, you know what? If I wanted my radio stations to be number one, I could say, keep the money, hire five great people, the best five you can find, and have great people on all the time, so we can always be the number one radio station. Do I do that? Well, we got a pretty good radio station as it is. Could be I even like better it. if I gave up my salary and said, hey. Bring in even better people. Bring in more. Everybody works two hours or three hours, and then you just have new shows every couple hours. You know, all stars, all the best of the best people all day long. Yeah, I guess you're right, right there. Tom. All I care about is getting paid. It's their problem to find money to pay everybody else, not my problem. And that's how Brett Favre felt. No matter what he said, that's the fact. Yeah, maybe that's just that's just become kind of like a. A saying, I guess. Please, no. this is all. This is all about greasing the skids to the Hall of Fame. That's all this is. He knows it's going to be run seven bazillion times on ESPN, and he wants to make sure everybody sees him as a sensitive, emotional person. This guy was all about the money. There's no doubt he was all about the money. Yeah, I, he was a good player, though, Tommy Boy. And he was all about the money. And by the yeah. way, I'm good at what I do, and I get paid a lot, and I'm worth it. I agree. I hope the people at CBS feel they're getting their money's worth. I do. <laughs> if, if I didn't make as much as I did, we wouldn't have to have Brian Whitman on at night. We could have somebody really good. <laughs> oh. But I'm not giving any of it back. Take me out, Kobe Sal, Tom. Here you go, Anthony. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Yeah, the air I breathe. She's so special to me. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, this just into the Tom Likas newsroom. Do you see this story? Yes, Dateline, Minneapolis. Brett Favre's retirement this week may mean out with the old, but the Packer quarterback's name. Has new life in the retirement mecca of Florida. Green Bay Press Gazette reports that David and Emily Kinsall of Palatka, Florida, claim their new twin boys, Brett and Favre. <laughs> Favre, it's not time for your play date yet. you got to be kidding me. David said, I was hoping we'd have at least one year of him still playing. The twins were born on February 22nd. The Press Gazette report says David Kinsaw grew up in Florida and moved to Madison, Wisconsin, and lived there for about three and a half years and now is back in his home state. He told the newspaper... There's a whole culture up there watching the games, being interested in the Packers. I just really missed it. And I loved watching Brett play. You could just really tell he loved the game, and he was fun to watch. Now you have a son named Favre. More on this story as it becomes available. 
one 800 tom That's our telephone number. This is David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Uh, I'd just like to point out a couple things about Favre. I'm a longtime Packer fan. Um, the spelling of his name is because he's of French an- ancestry. It, 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 the French don't pronounce that name Favre. They don't. They do. The, sp- the spelling is French. And... Uh, the other thing is that, you know... That doesn't Favre, mean that he's Favre pronouncing it the way that the French pronounce it. It, it is, but... Um, no, I've been uh, to... Have you been to France? Yeah, many times. Really? And you're telling me that that name is pronounced Favre, F-A-R-V. F-A-V-R-E. No, no, but is it pronounced... <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is like pulling teeth. Is it pronounced F-A-R-V? Well, look at... Let's, you know... I'm no, it's not. About the name. It's me, not. Let me tell you about uh, about the fact that if he was all about the money, after his first contract was up, why wouldn't he have gone to New York or L.A.? Have you been to Green Bay? Would you stay in Green Bay for 18 years? No, but guess what? What did they pay him? A, a million dollars a year? Half a million? What did they pay him? No, but he stayed there because of the law. Did they pay him and the NFL minimum? Packer, the Packers have did they a pay him the team. Did they pay him the NFL minimum? Of course of course they paid him. Why did, the, why did they pay him more than the minimum? Well, because you know he got he got what he deserved. No, no, but I'm, but but if he was if he was, Jenny, if it wasn't about money, if it was all about the love of the game, why would he take more than the minimum? Well, because he wanted to get you know his fair share. I'm not going to. No, say he, he said it was not about the money. He said that. Yeah, look, at, if it was about the money, yeah, of course it was about the money. To a big venue where he was. That's not the point. He made a lot of money in Green Bay. Don't kid yourself. Let me point out one other thing. After Katrina, Brett Favre commandeered a group of semis and took water and food down to the people in New Orleans before the federal government. What does that have to do with what we're talking about? I, I'm saying, what the hell does this guy have to do to be a to, to be a hero these days? It's like to take a shot at this guy. I think it's just below the. Belt. I just think uh, whining and blubbering like that at a news conference. Come on, be a man. I think you're wrong. Stand up. Everyone. That's all I want to say. Well, you're entitled to your opinion. Look at this from ESPN. Last year, when Favre became the NFL's all-time touchdown leader, he he earned $11 million in salary for the Packers, plus $7 million in endorsements. But it wasn't all about the money. No, no, no. It was all for the love of the game. David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how are you doing, Tom? Doing okay, David. Uh, I just wanted to call and say that Brett Favre is a gigantic pussy, and I've felt that way for many years. And all day today I've been sitting at home listening to ESPN say that he's one of the best quarterbacks of all time, and I beg to differ. I think he's nowhere near Joe Montana, Dan Marino, John Elway, Troy Aikman. None of them have thrown that many interceptions possible. Let's also point out how many Super Bowls Tom Brady has won. True that. And, and how many Brett Favre hasn't. I in the service that's a – Brett Favre fanatic, and I tell them all that he's a gigantic puss, always has been. And then you go cry. How can you cry when you got 50 million reasons sitting at home to go sit on your ass and go fishing for the rest of your life? Put your mouth. We're on the air. We're on the air. Sorry about that. But I'm sitting here barely scraping by, and if I had 50 million reasons to retire, I don't know any other person in this country that would cry on their retirement day. They'd be happy <laughs> they get to go fishing and do nothing. <laughs> Thank you for that, David. No problem. Appreciate the call. Alan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Big brother Tom. Hey, how's it going? All right, man. You are right on the money on this. I mean, I've, Brett Favre is a great player. I mean, I, I'll say that. But uh, he's downplaying this whole thing for basically the media and the people who are going to vote him into the Hall of Fame. Well, that's how I see it. That's how I see it. I mean, come on. I also heard that... Um, when uh, Randy Moss was a free agent, he was really pressing the Packers to get him. And if they didn't, you know, he, you know, I, I thought, okay, if they didn't get him, he'd retire. And that's, and that's exactly what happened. Right. And uh, his, his agent was making a big stink about getting Randy Moss uh, to the Packers, as a matter of fact. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Tom, you're right. Tom, you are right on. Can you take me out with that, that TiVo, you know, the, the little sound effect with, like, um, hurry up and blow me up? All right, here you go. No, he wanted ba-doop, ba-doop, ba-doop. There we go. Then he wanted this. one 
1-800-585-800-TOM. That is our telephone number. This is David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Hey. What are you doing? I'm doing a radio show. I'm in a studio, oh, yeah. and I'm talking into a microphone. Yes. You know what, Tom? You're a fool. You and everybody else. Really? Well, let's talk about what kind of fool I am. I stand here making a seven-figure income. Uh, and to talk to talk to people like you who get paid nothing to be grist for my mill. Who's stupid? You are kind of fool that compares yourself to Brett Favre. All right. Yes. You sit in here. You sit in here saying people you wouldn't cry on your last radio show because no one would give a damn about your last radio. It has show, nothing right? to do with it. By the way, I mean, by the way, well, if Brett Favre was crying, was he crying to, for the benefit of the people watching him or for himself? You know what? You a Kings fan. What does this have to do with what we're talking I'll about? I'll tell you what it has to do. Do you a Kings fan? I, I'm not even going to. This has nothing to do with my love of hockey. Nothing. Matt on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? Going great. I uh, have to disagree because cause I think the tears were, were real. Because if you think about it, he played. Uh, this has been half his life, basically. So? Yeah, but. Uh, I've been in radio uh, more than half my life. So, well, well, the thing is, though, uh, he put in a bunch of effort, and so do I. So, uh, yeah, I guess you're right. Thank you. Collapses like a house of cards. This is too easy. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. <laughs> Let's say hello to Jeff on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. First time, long time. I'm yes. I'm said from Wisconsin, radio TV film major. I think you're going too tough on Brett. Man, he had 400-pound guys coming after him every weekend, and uh, it's tough to go back to. You know, I'm sure he's... Well, it was 16 tough. weekends out of 52, so there were 36 weekends. Nobody was coming after him. Yeah, I know it, but uh, you know what? The people in Wisconsin, they got nothing else. They're freezing their butts Well, there you go. Them. Now you're getting down to brass tacks here. People in Wisconsin had nothing going on. Yeah, but you know what? L.A. has no team. and uh, you That's, know, that's so just fine. Good. We've all got satellite dishes. Uh, we don't need a team. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, uh, exactly. Well, it's yeah, better, than living, right. better than living in Wisconsin and looking like a bratwurst like most of the people there. Well, yeah, like you and me. You know, you, you are what you eat. <laughs> well, Tom, I gotta disagree with you, but uh, love it to you and uh, blow me up. And oh, and yeah, I, I don't think you can put Brett in comparison with the Nasty Man and all the other radio guys. Well, I, I wasn't comparing him to the Nasty Man, but uh, okay. although he did work in Nasty Man, did work in New Orleans for a while. <laughs> yeah, and I was, you know, and, uh, and I, I do miss Johnny B a little bit. And uh, but you I, know, radio, uh, radio guys, I love. Don't him. worry. When I'm blubbering through my farewell address, I will thank him. Perfect. All right. Thanks a lot, Tom. Blow me up. I'll blow you up, baby. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Antoine on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Great. Hey, I want to say something. That guy that called earlier about the French, I am French. And the guy is an idiot because it's totally wrong. To pronounce Favre, it's called Favre. That's how you pronounce it. In French, it's Favre, not uh, Favre. Yes, of course so it's that, not. So being French, I was laughing my head off that this guy actually thinks that's how we say it, and we don't. And he claims to have been to France. Can you believe it? Anyways, that's all I had to say. I had to, I had to correct him. <laughs> Thank I you. I, I, knew, I knew someone who was French would call in and uh, set that straight. Oh, Tom, I'm telling you, I laughed my head off. I said, this guy does not know what he's saying. So obviously he's never been to France. <laughs> he did, did Ben Favre was just illiterate. <laughs> or all dyslexic, right, or both. Copy me out, buddy. Here you go, baby. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Cam on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Cam. Sorry, Tom. It was uh, overrun with uh, Kobe getting uh, his freak on. Thank you. Uh, thanks for taking the call. I wanted to compliment you on uh, on pissing people off and getting them to call in today with the topic you got right now. I think it's kind of funny. It almost seems like you're poking at your demographic, which is something you Why would you assume that everybody who's a fan of mine 
would be a no. Brett Favre fan. That's not my point at all. The point is uh, men at the age of your demographic tend to like heroes and football, and Brett Favre is one, uh, hence all the calls of people calling well, in. You know, I don't want my hero blubbering. I want my hero to be a man to the end okay. and stand up and thank everybody definitely, and definitely say goodbye good, and, and walk tall. Definitely a good point there. But, again, this is Brett Favre. I mean, in, in his heyday of taking pills, the, guys couldn't, the guy couldn't finish the game without crying. So that's him in one sense. The other sense, the fact that he didn't give his salary away to the team, I mean, that's happened one time in professional sports, and Gretzky did it with the Kings. Other than that, it doesn't and didn't ever happen. So Wait, wait, wait. What, what happened with Gretzky and the Kings? Well, uh, Gretzky took a reduced salary from McNall and had him share it with the King, with the rest. I of the team. I do not remember that happening. The one time, that? no, oh, and I'm yeah, a Kings fan. No, no. What I do remember, the person who did do that was Kevin Garnett with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Well, if you look up Gretzky, and then what thing. the owner appeared to do there was just put the money in his pocket and say, "Thanks a lot, oh, Kev. Exactly. See you later." There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, it's just interesting points. Yeah, you got me pretty fired up. Brett's uh, Brett's a good uh, yeah, I'm the idiot with the the French pronunciation. I'm glad the French guy called in to correct that. That was pretty stupid. <laughs> I thought that was doesn't pretty help fun. Us, doesn't help us calling in to defend far when we got idiots like that. So you're absolutely right. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. My ex-girlfriend, she says the biggest mistake I ever made was introducing you to Tom Likas, but it was the biggest gift that she ever gave me. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. At one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, thank you for tuning in. In case you're just tuning in, let's listen to Brett Favre one more time, blubbering at his news conference. I promised I wouldn't get emotional. I'd like to thank the the Packers for giving me an opportunity as well. I hope that every penny. <laughs> I hope that every penny that they've spent on me, they know it was money well spent. I, uh, it was never about the money or fame or, or the records. And I hear people talk about your accomplishments and things that It was never my accomplishments. It was our accomplishments. And the teammates that I played with, and I can name so many, it was never about me. It was about everybody else. I'm honored. Really. Um, yeah, I am honored. I hope everyone knows that how special this is. I truly appreciate the opportunity. And as they say, all good things must come come to an end. Chauncey, on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hello, Tom. Hello. Yeah, I just wanted to agree with you totally on this. I agree that, like, pretty much all those tears are kind of insincere, maybe a little bit of a mar. But, like, I like how on Tuesday when he retired, it was done through, like, uh, voicemails left to people on ESPN and other reporters that he was really good friends with. And then because the rest of the sports world wanted to ask him questions about it, Thought it was a little suspicious that that whole not signing Moss thing that we got this conference that we did today. I don't think uh, I, I don't think he's as uh, altruistic as he wants you to believe. Do you? Not really. I mean, I think he he wanted to uh, he wanted to go out kind of quietly. I think he tried originally, 
just kind of let Aaron Rodgers take over and let you know it play out. But everybody wanted this big grand finale. They're upset that it all ended on an interception. That was the last play of his career. They wanted him to go out with fireworks or something like that. Yeah, well, he's lucky he came out of it with uh, his brain intact. You know what I'm saying? And some people are not so lucky. Exactly, like Troy Aikman. Right. Chauncey, thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Ahmad on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. Anyway, I'll just like I say I'd like to disagree because I think Brett Favre is one of the greatest. I'm not – I made no comment about his ability to play football. Right. I mean, I know I, I don't disagree that he went out with the Big Bang, and, and I agree that he was ending his career, but – the way I, I didn't like the way that he his retirement, the whole entire you know the tears and all that. Well, that's all I'm commenting on. Right, right, and I understand that. And he's a big, tough football player. If you're a fan of his, don't you want to see him go out as right. a big, tough guy? Right, and one thing I also did is the, the way he's been deciding the last three or four years. Am I should I retire this year? Should I retire that year? And all along, the uh, Packers haven't been able to plan for the future because they have to worry about poor Brett's feelings. Exactly, exactly. And then just the way he took a long time on deciding when is the right time. Yes. Yeah. And then, so with the tears, uh, I think the tears were kind of set up. I uh, you, uh, you think they were set up? I, I just think they're pathetic. Yeah. I mean, big Brett Favre, he took tons of sacks and tackles, and he starts crying now. Boo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Mac on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Max with two X's. Oh, with two X's. Isn't that cool? Yeah, hi. Um, men should not cry. It's... I looked up to my dad for a sense of strength, and I've never seen the man cry. He's almost 70. He has lost his house. He has lost, you know, a dog. He's lost. He's lost, and he still hasn't cried. When I just listened to that that speech by him, I'm asking myself, who died? Like, is he telling... Is he is he telling the faces of the people who are parents of our soldiers in Iraq that their child has died? No, he's resigning from a multi-million dollar career that he had. He, and frankly, if he didn't want to get emotional, he shouldn't have gone into, it wasn't about the money. It was a bit, it's so unmasculine. It's just, he, I agree with you, he's a pussy. Hang on a second here, Max. Uh, Craig, what did you want to say to Max here? Oh, it's making me sick. You know, men don't cry. Let me tell you something. It's not even about Brett Farr, the football player. It's about Brett Farr, the man. The man that the last two contract renewals did take a major multi-million dollar reduction so they could get better players. The man that the last time that he decided to play said, if you, to the general manager and the owner, if you don't think I'm what's best for the team, I will step down. And they told him, no, we want you to stay. It's about the man that sure he makes millions of dollars. Hey, God bless America, Tom. You make millions of dollars. I make almost a million dollars. Yeah, but I never, ever that. come in here and say to you, it's not about the money. Right. Uh, you, if you well, think well, I would, you if you think I would have three words to say to you without being paid millions of dollars, you you, you, you got to guess again. This is all about the money. But I'm not like him pretending it's not about the money. Of course it's about the money. I made $11 million a year. Of course it's about the money. What do you do with your money? I mean, you're not half the man, Brett Far as Tom, and I'm a great listener. I love you to death. But you know what? That man has spent more of his time and his money on, and I can go on and on. He's got, he has spent almost... Uh, you think it's money? Pills? What do you do with your money to help the youth of America, Tom? Because he spent $23 million. I give the money. I give the youth oh, of America the advice money. they need. That's cool. He spent a lot of money that he well earned, and that's fantastic. A lot of celebrities do that to It's about clout. being a hero to the youth. It's about what he did for the game. He's not selfish. He didn't take the... 
rescued salary so that his team could not get better players. He okay, did well, take a reduction. Okay, well, that's a lot of emotional baggage, and women have emotional baggage. But he was but what, on what, the microphone. That's what being in the, in the public eye is all about. You know what? You know how many people wanted to see him get up there and be real? He's not faking those tears. This yeah, is his life. This is like, his entire he life. A little what, bit, he cried maybe a minute too long. I think he was I And whose opinion? Yours? You have an education in psychology? I mean, you know what's right, how long to cry? I mean, that's ridiculous. Well, when you're giving a speech, you're usually prepared, and you know... Uh, and after you give a lot of speeches, you're, you're qualified to make that statement? Because I'm a public speaker. I'm not I, I wouldn't agree with you at all. I think what, what you what saw was a What do you need to make any statement besides being an American and having the First Amendment on your side? The man oh. was crying. He was, in, he was making a speech, and he got emotional. Yeah, and okay. I think it's about a man and a father and a very good hero to the youth of America, among others, that has spent a lot of his life. His wife basically works 60 hours a week. You know what she does 60 hours a week? She runs the Brett Farr Youth Foundation. I'm sorry? Do you know her personally? Like, do you do you wash his feet at night? Like, you sound um, like you're emotionally no, invested No, I, I in read it. newspapers and watch the news and read books, things that you probably don't do. But I don't want to get into a personal attack on you. I don't know you. I just called to say that Brett Farr is not all that he's being made out to be. He's a great man. He made a lot of money. He earned it. He deserved it. God bless America. You take it. I would take it. Tom takes it. Tom deserves his money. But it's not fair to sit there and say... He, but the difference is, free, I don't, I don't, I suffer. don't come out here and say it's not about the money. I guess saying that is disingenuous. Yeah, I didn't say that. Didn't boys, say that. He not, said that. Jeff Brett money. Favre said that. Boys, I'm not talking oh, no, about but, the money. That's just a secondary issue. Okay, it's Point about blank, money, but it's cried. not all about the money. The money that he made, he did a lot of good, it's, and he continues to do a lot of good. It's not about it at all. Are you, are you, are you thick in the bread? Like, listen to what I'm saying. The best communicators listen, okay? Here's a tip. He might have made money. He might have not made money. The thing is is that he's a public figure. He's a masculine man. And he cried. Not for, yeah. not for like a little sniffle. No, no, no. He turned the waterworks on, got but choked he's up. Probably, he's he probably by far the toughest football player in the NFL today, if not almost in the top five ever. No one, no one that knows football, that, that, that has anything to do with football or watches it or is a fan, it's not about Wisconsin, knows he's probably the toughest football player I have ever seen in my flipping life, by far. And if a man wants to get up there and cry, let him cry. It's not my business. It's not your business. And that man has done more good with his money than almost any other football player I can think of, maybe other than two or three that I can think of off the top of my head. So one reason I called Tom, I'm going to let you continue with your show. Great, great fan of yours. Tell everybody to watch your show, but I think you're absolutely wrong. I think you hit it wrong with Brett Farr. I think he's sincere. I think that he has done more for this game than almost anybody. I think that he's done more for the youth of this country. Uh, you, you've said all that before. Don't be repeating yourself. Don't push your luck. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Billy on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much. Yeah, these uh these guys that are calling in here, you know, uh, agreeing uh, or shall I say disagreeing with you, man. They they need to check themselves because I think they might be a bunch of pussies too. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, I do. I mean, I, I I totally agree with you, Tom. If the guy is, is gonna is gonna go on national television, he should have he should have took a, a a different turn. He should have he should have you know he should have kept kept away from getting all emotional. Uh, and and the, we wouldn't even be having this topic. The guy's a big pussy, and everybody knows it. And uh, with that being said, can you please take me out taser style? Yes, we certainly can. What did I do? Get off me, man. Get the f off of me, man. I didn't do anything. Don't tase me, bro. Don't tase me. I didn't. That is heartwarming. It certainly is. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. If you're listening on a podcast or some other device, you can always go to our website and hear a stream at blowmeuptom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.